Good morning and welcome back to Mary's Book Club. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Seat of the Soul by Gary Zukov. And the reason I chose to read this book, I may have already mentioned, is that Oprah one recommended it and she has recommended it for years. I think this is the 25th anniversary version and this isn't even brand new. So she's talked about the book quite a good bit and I know that for her, this was the beginning of um, putting spirituality on mainstream TV. So she took a big risk by inviting Gary, uh, but the change that she said the book made in her life made me curious to really see what it was about. And I've had it on my list for like seven or eight years now, I just never got around to it. And so, yeah. The gist of the book is pretty much very similar, if I could say, to a New Earth by Eckhart Tolle, except Eckhart is talking about, I don't know, I feel like he's more layman's and it was an easier read than this one was for sure. Eckhart talks a lot about the ego, right? He talks to you about like how a lot of the things that you think, say, and do are ego stemmed and whether you want to admit it to yourself or not. Whereas Gary is focusing on the personality versus the soul. It'll make a little more sense to you once you grab your copy, but um, let's jump into the quotes, shall we? This is Maya Angelou's preface actually to the book. She said, courage is the most important of all the virtues because without courage, one cannot practice any virtue consistently. We can be kind, generous, just, courteous, and merciful sporadically but to display those virtues consistently calls for an enormous display of courage. Facts, no facts, no facts. They would bear the experience of living until death would relieve them of their responsibility. Then as they died, soul or God would continue as it could not die. Um, it's that first sentence for me. I was just like, wow, until death relieved them of the responsibility. Yikes, man. It's just to think that that is the perspective and that is like how most people feel that life is it's just endurance until you're relieved it's quite saddening for me um it's sad <laughs> after reading gary zukov's book for the 10th time i still find it outrageous 10 times y'all i don't think i've ever read any book for 10 times all right this is oprah the seed of the soul put into words my what my own soul already knew and had been trying to tell me Mm. It's no big secret that I have a big personality. I've been using it to my advantage since the third grade, but using that personality to serve my soul and making sure the two were aligned changed the way I did everything. I suddenly recognized all the times I'd gotten off track by letting my personality rule. <laughs> I started to notice that the degree to which I ever felt unhappiness, discomfort, or despair was in direct proportion to how far I let myself stray from the seat of my soul. I feel like that's really like a big, that's a good way to sum up the book. I should have just read that last, but now let's jump into the actual quotes. We were taught, in other words, that evolution means the progressive development of organizational complexity. Our deeper understanding tells us that a truly evolved being is one that values others more than it values itself and that values love more than it values the physical world and what's in it. What do you guys think about that? When the physical environment is seen only from the five sensory point of view, physical survival appears to be the fun fundamental criterion of evolution because no other kind of evolution is detectable. Mm -mm. Brothers and sisters quarrel for the same reason that corporations quarrel. They seek power over one another. Families like cultures are patriarchal or matriarchal. One person wears the pants. Children learn this early and it shapes their life. Mm. This is a perfect reflection of how we come to perceive power as the possession of a few while the majority serve it as victims. Anything we fear to lose, a home, a car, an attractive body, an agile mind, a deep belief is a symbol of external power. What we fear is an increase in our vulnerability. That's facts. Um, while loss doesn't feel good, I've done away with the fear of losing for quite a while now. And more so the fear of losing a belief. 
um, just because I've come to realize in the last seven, five, seven years or so that I don't know everything. We as a human species don't know everything. So I don't care to lose a belief, no matter how strong I thought it was. Um, I'm always open to the understanding that there's always something new to know or to learn or discover. Competition for external power lies at the heart of all violence. Facts. Facts on facts on facts. Let's see what else. Then he talks about reverence. Actions and reactions in the physical arena set energy into motion, forming in our experiences and revealing in the process the lessons that the soul has yet to learn. When our actions create discord in another person, we ourselves in this lifetime or in another will feel that discord. Likewise, if our actions create harmony and empowerment in another, we also will come to feel that harmony and empowerment. This allows us to experience the effects of what we have created and thereby to learn to create responsibly. That's deep. Like people say drive responsibly, drink responsibly, all this stuff. But what about creating responsibly, right? I think that I found peace in my life. I begun the journey to peace anyway, when I decided that I didn't have to compete. All I had to do was create. And I created a bubble, for the lack of a better word, and it's been amazing. Once I realized that I'm only responsible for the thoughts, the actions, the beliefs, systems, the feelings that I create, it took me to another level because I no longer felt like I was like at the mercy of others, but not only that, like I was just like wandering the world, you know, aimlessly. Does non-physical reality exist? What you really are asking is, if I cannot prove the existence of non-physical reality, do I decide that it is nonsensical? Do I decide that there is no answer or do I expand myself to the level at which the answer can be given? Mm -mm -mm. Wow. All right, final quote. Power is not the ability to exert your will upon another person. There is no inner security in that kind of power. That isn't a tribute of time, and as time changes, that changes too. Do you have a strong body that others cannot challenge? That will change. What will you do then? Do you have a physical beauty that can be used to influence others? That will change. What will you do then? Do you have a cleverness that maneuvers others? What happens when you are too tired to use it or you miss the opportunity? <laughs> if you're not at home in the world, you live in the fear of one who can never truly relax and enjoy life. Is this power? I'm gonna let y'all marinate on that. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the effect of the seed of the soul. It was an incredible book. Again, hard for me to read, challenging for me to read. I thought because I took a break and read a few fictional books that this would be a good balance, but for whatever reason, it's like, I don't know, maybe my soul <laughs> wasn't ready to sit down. Uh, I don't know what it is. I couldn't place it, but it was, a, it was not the easiest read. It was enjoyable nevertheless, and like some of the things he talks about are so, they, I recognize them. Yeah, as truth. So yeah, I'm gonna rate it 4.5, just because again, that 0.5 is just, it, it was not an easy read. It did not flow very well for me. It was a little more stoic than I prefer, but it was a great book nevertheless. As usual, the links for the hard copy, Kindle, and Audible version will be linked down below. If you've already read the book, I'd love to hear from you. What were your thoughts? Do you guys think it was worth all the hype and all the ranting and raving? Comment below and let me know. Thank you so much for joining me in another episode of Mary's Book Club, and I will see you next month. Bye-bye now. <laughs>